This video will cover models with dummy variables, sometimes also called indicator variables. At the end of this video, you should feel comfortable specifying a dummy variable model appropriate for answering a given question, making predictions in a model with dummy variables, and explaining the meaning of a dummy variable coefficient. Let's start with a question that has received substantial attention. How large is the gender pay gap? The gender pay gap refers to the concerning fact that women on average earn less than men even when the comparison is drawn between women and men who are similar in other characteristics. What data will we need to estimate the gender pay gap? If we had a, simple, a sample of individuals, we need some measure of their pay, such as the annual wage and salary income, in other words, income earned from working, measured in dollars. We also need to know their gender. What would this variable look like? Gender is a qualitative characteristic rather than a numerical one, but it could be represented numerically. Suppose we had a variable female that was equal to 1 if the individual is female and 0 if the individual is male. At first it may not be obvious how to use these variables to estimate the gender pay gap, but let's start with a simple regression model where the measure of pay is the dependent variable and the female variable is the independent variable. In this model, the independent variable is a, a binary variable that is used to represent a qualitative characteristic, in this case gender. Such a variable is called a dummy variable or an indicator variable. You could imagine dummy variables representing a wide variety of qualitative factors. Any question that has a yes or no answer can be represented with a 1 or 0 in a dummy variable. The current population survey, or CPS, has the information needed to construct these variables so let's estimate this model on a sample of CPS respondents who are employed. Here are the results of estimating our model. We can see the estimate of the female coefficient, or beta 1, and the intercept, or beta 0. Let's summarize the estimates by writing the equation for the sample model with the estimated coefficient substituted. How do we interpret the estimated beta 1 coefficient in this model? Normally we would start by considering a one unit increase in the independent variable, but that seems like a strange idea given that the independent variable can only be zero or one. Let's hold that thought and take a different approach to understanding the model. Fortunately, we can make predictions in a dummy variable model the same way that we can in any other regression model. For example, if we wanted to predict the income for a female, we would need the estimated coefficients from the model and we'd also need to plug in an appropriate value for the independent variable. If, if we're making a prediction for a female, then the value of the female variable is 1. So the predicted income for females is 53,838 minus 17,845, which is 35,993. It may be unsurprising to learn that this value is also the average income for women in the sample. After all, if we only know a person's gender, it seems reasonable that the best way to predict their income would be to use the average for their gender. We can follow a similar process to predict the income of a male. Substituting zero for the female variable, we find that the predicted income for males is 53,838. Once again, this value also matches the average income for men in the sample. We already see a substantial pay gap between women and men although in a few moments we'll consider whether we can make a more careful comparison. Before we do that, let's note a few other things about the model's results. First, the average income for men also matches the model's estimated intercept, or beta zero hat. Men have a value of zero for the model's only independent variable, so the model's intercept represents the dependent variable mean for this group. What about the estimated beta one coefficient of negative 17,845? Note that this was the amount we subtracted from the predicted male income to calculate the predicted female income. In other words, this coefficient estimate is the difference in average incomes between females and males, or the female-male income gap. To summarize the interpretation of the model's coefficients, the estimated intercept tells us that men earn $53,838 per year on average, the estimated coefficient on the female variable tells us that women earn $17,845 per year less than men on average. 
On one hand, we didn't need regression analysis to calculate these values. We could have simply calculated the average values of income for men and women. On the other hand, there are some advantages of having these quantities measured in a regression framework. Let's discuss two of these advantages. First, dummy variables are useful for hypothesis testing. Suppose we wanted to test statistically whether women and men have the same average income. Beta 1 represents the difference in average income between women and men, so the null hypothesis, beta 1 equals 0, would mean that there is no gender pay gap. We could test this against the alternative hypothesis, beta 1 is not equal to 0, which would mean there is some gender pay gap. We could perform this test easily by returning to the model's results. The p-value value for the female coefficient corresponds exactly to the hypothesis test we proposed, and the very small p-value, which rounds to 0, indicates that we reject the null hypothesis that beta 1 equals 0 at any reasonable significance level. In other words, there is indeed a gender pay gap with very high statistical confidence. To see an additional advantage of dummy variables, let's now turn back to our original question about how to measure the gender pay gap. Perhaps one reason why women earn less than men is because they tend to have some other characteristic that is associated with lower earnings. For example, what if women tend to work fewer hours each week than men? Perhaps the pay gap would be more meaningful if we were comparing women and men who worked similar hours each week. This might remind you of omitted variable bias, and fortunately regression analysis offers a straightforward way to draw these types of comparisons. We can add controls to uh, control variables to the model. The CPS has a variable for the usual number of hours worked each week. If we add this variable to the model, then the beta 1 coefficient is now interpreted as the female-male pay gap conditional on usual hours worked. That is, it tells us the difference in average incomes of women and men who work similar hours each week. Let's now turn to the model's estimates. For context, it is useful to take a quick look at the coefficient on the added control variable. The positive coefficient indicates that working more hours each week is associated with higher annual pay as we would expect. Turning to the estimate of beta 1, we see that the coefficient is still negative, but is smaller in magnitude than the model without the control variable. It tells us that women earn on average almost $11,000 per year less than men who work the same number of hours each week. Our earlier estimate indicated that women earn on average almost $18,000 per year less than men without adjusting for differences in hours worked. Together, these estimates tell us that gender differences in annual income are partly explained by differences in hours worked. One could imagine that other things might explain the remaining gap, such as gender differences in occupations or experience levels, and indeed other analysis has taken an approach similar to ours to control for other factors. Those additional controls often explain more of the gap, meaning that the female-male gap is smaller when controlling for additional factors, but in most settings a gender pay gap persists. The persistence of the gap has been a serious concern among researchers who seek to better understand the causes of the gap and possible policy solutions to narrow or close the gap. Let's explore one more variation on, a dummy, on dummy variable models by asking a related question. How does pay differ by race? To answer this question empirically, we clearly still need data on incomes, but we'd also need data describing race. Like gender, race is a qualitative characteristic, but race also has multiple categories. Accordingly, we can describe race using a set of dummy variables. For example, one dummy variable could indicate whether the individual is white. The CPS has four other broad race categories, so we also have dummy variables for black, Asian, Native American, and a category for other races not included in the above four. How shall we create a dummy variable model using these race categories? Clearly the de dependent variable is income, and the independent variable should include dummy variables for describing race. For reasons that will become clear by the end of the video, our model will include all of the race dummy variables except for one. Since we have five race categories, the model includes dummy variables for four of those. It turns out that the model makes the same predictions regardless of which category we exclude, 
but here the white dummy variable is excluded. We will refer to white as the omitted or excluded category of race in this model. Let's now turn to the model's estimates. To interpret the coefficients, we will use the same strategy as we did with the gender model, making predictions. Take a moment to try the following exercise. Use the model's estimates to predict the income of a white individual and then predict the income of an Asian individual. You may wish to pause the video for a moment while you work through this exercise. As we have done with other models, we make predictions simply by substituting values into variables based on information we know. Let's work from the sample model and start with the predicted income of a white individual. Because the individual is white, he or she is not black, so we can substitute black equals zero. Similarly, the individual is not Asian, Native American, or a member of the other race categories. All terms except beta zero hat are multiplied by zero, so the predicted income is simply beta zero hat, the model's intercept. From the model's estimates, this value is 46,086. You have probably already guessed that this means the average annual income of whites in the data set is $46,086. Next, let's turn to the predicted income of an Asian individual. We can once again substitute black equals zero. However, the value of the Asian variable is now one. The Native American and other race variables remain zero. So the predicted income is beta zero hat plus beta two hat where beta 2 hat is the coefficient on the Asian variable. Once we locate both of those values in the model's output, we can sum the two values to find that the predicted income and also the average annual income for Asians in the data set is $52,573. Let's conclude by thinking about how to interpret the coefficients in a dummy variable model with multiple categories. Note that the average income of whites, the model's omitted race category, is also the model's intercept term. Next, notice that the, the value we added to the average white income to get the average Asian income is also the coefficient on the Asian variable. In other words, this coefficient represents the Asian white difference in average incomes. This is no coincidence. This exercise illustrates two points about interpreting coefficients in dummy variable models with multiple categories. First, beta zero hat, the intercept, represents the average of the dependent variable for the omitted category, in this case the average income of whites. Second, the coefficient on a dummy variable represents the difference in the average of the dependent variable between the category indicated by that dummy variable and the omitted category, in this case the income difference between Asians and whites. Finally, these interpretations might provide some insights into why we had to omit one of the race categories. In essence, the intercept reflects the omitted category, while the dummy variable coefficients reflect the differences between each category and the omitted category. A more technical reason to omit one category is that including a dummy variable for each mutually exclusive category would result in perfect multicollinearity. Summing all of the race variables together would result in a value of one for each individual, in essence making it the same as the intercept term. To conclude, dummy variable models are a useful method for estimating differences in a variable among discrete groups, adjusting those estimated gaps for other observable differences among the groups, and testing hypotheses about the differences.